Kia ora team, welcome to this lesson on the ecosystem and feeding relationships. So in this lesson, we're learning about ecosystems, non-living environmental factors, which are also called abiotic factors, living environmental factors, which we also call biotic factors, and feeding relationships. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to Describe the biotic and abiotic factors in any given ecosystem. Describe each feeding relationship, whether they're producers, consumers, or decomposers, using examples. And describe the predator-prey cycle. So what's an ecosystem? An ecosystem is a system made up of living factors and non-living factors that interact together as a system. We call these living factors biotic factors. These biotic or living factors include flora, which are plants, and fauna, which are animals. What about the non-living factors? We call these non-living factors abiotic factors. They include the climate, so the temperature, the amount of rain, the amount of light, how strong the wind is in the ecosystem, and so on. It also includes the soil and what nutrients are available in it. And it also includes the amount of water available to plants and animals. So again, biotic factors are living factors and abiotic factors are non-living. So here's an example of a pond ecosystem. It's made up of biotic living factors and abiotic non-living factors that interact together as a system. For the biotic or the living factors, we've got these birds, one bird here and another bird here. We've got fish and we've got these insects or other um, animals in the water. And they interact together by eating each other. So this fish here looks like it's going to eat this insect, while these birds here look like they're going to eat the fish or the insects in the water. When these animals eat another animal, it's called predation. The animal that's doing the eating is called a predator. On the other hand, these plants are also living organisms, but they don't eat other animals for food because they use energy from the sun to make their own food. Because they produce their own food, they're called producers. And what about abiotic or non-living factors? I've already mentioned one already, the sun. But what else? There's water and there's soil. Any animals that die or decompose get broken down into the soil and they return their nutrients back to the soil. So all living organisms within an ecosystem need to get their energy from somewhere to be able to live. Feeding relationships describe what organisms eat what to get their energy. Producers are plants that get their energy by using sunlight to make their own food. Plants make their own food through a special process called photosynthesis. So producers don't eat other living organisms, they make their own food using the sun's energy. On the other hand, organisms that eat other organisms are called consumers. So what kind of consumers are there? There are herbivores, which are animals that only eat plants, like this rabbit over here. It's eating a plant and that plant is the carrot. There are carnivores, which are animals that only eat other animals. For example, we've got this wolf here that's eating on a carcass of some other animal. And then there are omnivores, which are animals that can eat both plants and animals. Like this pig here, it can eat food scraps like chicken, but it can also eat plant scraps like lettuce. Animals that hunt and kill other animals are called predators. And those animals that are hunted and killed are called prey. In a healthy ecosystem, the numbers of predator and prey remain fairly constant. They go up and down each year, but generally, over many years, they have remained fairly constant. And there is usually more prey than predator. 
the numbers of predators and prey in an ecosystem can change in a predictable, cyclical manner. This repeating pattern is called a predator-prey cycle. In this graph, you can see that there's an up and down cycle. In this graph, you can see that the number of predators increase because there's more prey. You can also see that the number of prey decreases because there's more predators. And that results in the number of predators decreasing because there's less prey. And that goes on and on in a cycle. Finally, the last feeding relationship we're going to talk about are decomposers. Decomposers are animals like worms, bacteria, and fungi like mushrooms that break down dead organisms. After organisms are decomposed or broken down by bacteria and fungi, the nutrients from these dead plants and dead animals are returned to the soil. And plants absorb these nutrients through their roots. And that's the circle of life. So you've reached the end of this lesson. So by now, I hope you're able to describe the biotic and abiotic factors in a given system, describe each feeding relationship using example, and describe the predator-prey cycle. Thanks for watching. See you in the next lesson.